So this is our lab where we are going to experimentally determine the value for the ideal gas constant R. We have all of our equipment here. We have our scale. We have a large beaker. I've, I've pre-filled it with some water. About eight or nine hundred mils is fine. We have a 100 mil graduated cylinder. We have a wash bottle full of water. We have some uh, hydrochloric acid here. This is fairly concentrated. This is five molar. You'll be using six. I have a stopper with a hole through it. Okay, I have some pipettes. And we have a strip of magnesium ribbon. And I have some non reactive wire. This is nickel chromium. Uh, I believe the procedure says copper. Either one will work. Okay, our first part of the procedure is to. Uh, put on goggles, of course, but then get our magnesium. We want to get the mass of this magnesium. So I will tear the balance. Okay, and it's a zero. Good. The little circle means it's ready. We will find the mass of this magnesium. And we'll record that, 0 0.12 grams. Okay, here I have my magnesium strip, about, oh, seven centimeters. Okay, and my piece of wire, slightly over 115 centimeters. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold the magnesium into a small bundle, and I don't wanna pinch it. If you pinch it like this, pieces will break off very easily. Okay, we don't want that to happen. We just wanna kinda of fold it without pinching so that we have a tight bundle. Okay, about a centimeter or so in length. Okay. <clears throat> now we're gonna take our nickel or our wire. Okay, and we're gonna need to make a cage. So what we do is we put the magnesium right in the center, and we bend the wire around it. Okay, it's a little tricky, so just keep keep working at it. If your magnesium falls out, just put it back. Okay, you're gonna need to go a couple different directions. Okay, because we want to hold that magnesium in a good, secure bundle. And you can see it's not easy. Okay, but when I'm done, now I can give it a little shake and it doesn't come out. Okay, and I've got two ends there that I will stick into the stopper. We are about, oh, three centimeters long. Okay, next step is to get some of the hydrochloric acid. We are going to, we want 10 mils, okay, of the hydrochloric acid, and we're gonna measure it in our graduated cylinder here. So I'm just gonna pour in a little bit. You will obviously do this more carefully than I am, and that's a little too much. So I'll remove some of it. Okay, and there we go, 10 mils. The exact amount is not that important. Just as long, about 10 mils. Okay, next step, we're going to fill the rest of this all the way to the very, very top with water. Okay, and we wanna pour that down the side so we don't want the water and the hydrochloric acid to mix too much. So very gently pour down the side. You'll see it mix a little bit. You'll be able to see the, the swirling. And a little mixing is fine. Okay, just so I don't spill, I'm gonna put it in this container here. I'm gonna fill it all the way to the very, very top without spilling. 
There we go. <clears throat> Next, I'm going to place the other end of the wire cage into the hole of the stopper from the bottom. I want it about two centimeters or so above the uh, above the stopper. Okay, I want it sitting about there. Okay, um, if you sorry, I bent that the wrong way. If you bend this back in, okay, and it will, and then push, it should hold where you want it fairly nice. Okay, and then you can just bend that over. All right, the next steps must be done quickly, okay? We're gonna do this over the sink, I'm gonna do it over the tray. Uh, we're going to be putting the stopper into the graduated cylinder. Some of it's gonna overflow, it's okay, because at this part, it's mostly water. Some very, very dilute acid, so it's not gonna, not dangerous. Most of the acid is still down at the bottom of the graduated cylinder. But once I get it in, it's gonna start reacting. I need to very, very quickly get it inverted and in the big beaker. Something like this. Okay, and you can see I spilled a little bit, but very, very quickly you see bubbles forming. All right, and we are collecting gas up here. Once it's in this position, you can just rest it and wait. It'll take about 15 minutes or so for all of the magnesium to react. Okay, we are about three minutes in, and you can see that the reaction is happening. You can see some bubbles in there. Okay, and up at the very top, we are collecting those bubbles, and water is being forced out the bottom of the graduated cylinder and the level of the liquid there is decreasing as our gas volume increases. We're gonna let this run. Okay, we're about 10 or 15 minutes later. You can see we have a significant amount of gas so far. We have about 60 mils already. And if I zoom in on the magnesium, you can see it's fallen out of its cage and that's fine, but you can also tell that it is significantly reduced there's very much less magnesium than what we started with. Okay, I'm going to let this run until most or all, as much magnesium is gone as possible. Okay. Okay, the reaction is done. You can see that the magnesium is completely reacted. It's gone. The only thing left is the wire. Okay, and if we look up right there, is the line between our gas up here, the hydrogen gas that was created, and the solution underneath, okay, of the hydrochloric acid and water. So we need to get an accurate measurement of the volume of gas in there. To do that, we need to equalize the pressure because as you know, pressure uh, affects the volume of a gas, Boyle's Law. So in order to equalize the volume, it's actually really easy. All we have to do is raise or lower the graduated cylinder and we want to put this line here where the gas meets the liquid in the graduated cylinder at the same level as this line here where the liquid in the beaker sits okay so we raise or lower and we can read our measurement right there okay and in this graduated cylinder Remember you're reading upside down, we have 85.5 milliliters of hydrogen gas.